Okay, guys, 101. This is uh, week 13, part one. Um, today, we are going to begin our final reading of this crazy semester. So good job getting this far, if you did get this far. Um, so, and before I do that, I'm going to repeat myself. I do this every semester with all my students. It's just an important thing. Um, paper four, which is also known as the departmental final, is going to give you three questions. And you will uh, be able to, you will answer one of those three. Don't answer all three. Every semester, one person answers all three and they get like a D. So read the instructions carefully. Um, but they're, they're going to want you to, they're going to give you three questions to ask. And they're going to be questions probably having something to do with happiness. Um, um, and what you are going to do, and I'll, I'll talk more about what the questions might look like later. Um, you're going to pick one question. You're going to answer a whole essay about it. You're going to make sure that each paragraph connects back to that question you're answering, um, which is probably the most important thing. Um, you're going to make sure each paragraph has your opinion in it because you're because the question's asking you your opinion. So every paragraph better have your opinion in it somewhere since every paragraph is responding to that question. Um, and along the way, you're going to quote two philosophers. Those two philosophers have names. And the names of those two philosophers are Ralph Waldo Emerson and Oliver Berkman. Uh, so you and, and, and I realize we spent 10 weeks on Plato, and your instincts are going to be, quote Plato. There's nothing wrong with quoting Plato if you, if you feel like it, but, but you, that's not a requirement. Um, make, I'll say this. Make sure you quote Emerson and Berkman at least once before you quote Plato. You don't want to get in a situation where you quote Emerson, then you quote Plato, and then you stop. Um, that would be bad. That would land you like a D, uh, because the instructions say you got to quote both Emerson and Berkman. So make sure you quote both Emerson and Berkman. Now, I keep saying quote, but I think at this point in the semester, in week 13, you probably know that what I mean by quote is introduce the quotation, put the quotation, tell me what it means in your own words, give me some examples to explain what it's talking about, tell me how much you agree or disagree with it, and connect it back to the question you're answering at the top of the thing, right? Whatever question you selected from the three. And you're going to write an essay. Um, essay's got to be at least 500 words. Um, but that's, you know, pretty standard for, for this class, and you've been doing that all semester long. So, um, and that's it. That's going to be the assignment. And you will not have a chance to revise this one. Um, this is a, a slightly different thing. Uh, there may be some more details about how it's going to work and how you do it in Blackboard. There may be a time frame for it. I'll talk more about that later. Um, uh, like, it may be the kind of thing where I, I, I don't think they know yet. Uh, I'm filming this pretty early because it's October right now, but and, and you're watching this in December. But the the... Right now, I don't know all the details, but it, it, I'll, I'll, it's going to be, it may be something like you have three days to write this essay, but you have to do it in one sitting, or I don't know, there's, there's different, or, or they may time it, you may like open the essay up and a little timer starts going and you're going to have like, you know, two hours to write the thing or three hours to write it, I don't know. Um, don't let it stress you out. Um, uh, the reason why you should not be stressed out about this is because you spent 10 weeks doing Play-Doh, and Play-Doh is fucking hard. Um... So Emerson, I think, is a little bit easier than Plato, actually. Emerson's uh, almost easier to handle than Plato. Um, Berkman, who is the, the, the philosopher that I've saved for last, is hilariously easy. Berkman is comically easy. Berkman is a fucking joke. Uh, I don't, I shouldn't say that. That sounds really mean. I don't actually hate the Berkman piece. I don't hate it. I think it's actually pretty fun to read. Um, and he makes some good points. Um, but fundamentally, Berkman is doing something different than Emerson and Plato. Emerson and Plato are serious world-class philosophers. Um, they are some of the most important writers who has ever lived. Berkman is a guy writing an essay for a newspaper. So, and he quotes some famous philosophers, and he seems like he knows a thing or two, but he's not going to, Emerson and Plato are, all, are always going to make a list of the top 100 writers of all time. Berkman would not make the top 5,000. Um, there's nothing wrong with the guy. He's like a regular person. You know, he just, he just, he's a, he's, he's a more of just an ordinary guy who's probably got a job somewhere and he, he's writing an essay for the newspaper. And because he's writing for the newspaper and because he's writing, this is the only piece of, of reading that we've done where it's like written recently. Um, it's very easy to read for two reasons. One, because it's modern and all the stuff he talks about is stuff you've heard of. And two, because it's for the newspaper and not philosophers 
from 100 or about 2,000 years ago, his audience is like just regular people reading the newspaper. So it's a hell of a lot easier. And that's why I saved him for last. Um, Because I know at this point in the semester, you're all exhausted and you've been doing so much work in all your classes. And like, holy shit, the good news is Berkman is so goddamn easy. Uh, You guys are going to do fucking great. As long as you read those instructions. Paper four has, paper four, also known as the departmental final, has some instructions. You got to read them. I already went over what they are. I'm going to say it again. Make sure you, in your, you're going to be asked a question and you're going to answer that question. Make sure every paragraph connects to, uh, every paragraph you write connects to the question that you were asked and make sure that you quote Emerson and you quote uh, Berkman at least some point in there. Nothing wrong with quoting Plato, but you got to quote Emerson and Berkman. And when I say quote, I mean discuss um, before you get to Plato. Okay. Nothing good. Uh, is there anything else I want to say before we get started? No, not right now. I don't think I do. So without further ado, let's dive into Berkman. Berkman is longer. He's like twice as long as he's like, well, it's six pages. So I guess not twice as long. It's longer than Emerson. Um, but who boy, is it easy. And um, with Emerson, I felt like I had to stop every sentence, sometimes every couple of words um, to explain because Emerson uses some tough vocabulary. Um, it's not tough really, but it's old and we don't talk like that anymore. And so there are certain words he's going to use. Um, like piquancy, which is not, uh, I mean, it's a word, but you don't hear it very often. Um, so uh, Berkman does not do that. So with Berkman, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to read because we could just do like a whole paragraph um, at a time. So, okay. So it's a piece called Happiness is a Glass Half Empty. Uh, I'll start by talking about the title. Um, glass Half Empty. And, I, and a lot of you will know this already, and I realize this is silly, but we always have students who come from other countries Um, and one thing that makes it especially confusing to move to a new culture is that culture has expressions. And sometimes when you move there, you don't know what those expressions are. Glass half empty is an expression, um, that you should know at least, and and most of you probably know what it means already. It's a very famous expression, but just in case you don't, uh, I thought I would sort of explain what it means. So you take a glass and you fill it halfway up with water, right? And it's, a, it's sort of a joke. It's not like a serious expression. But, but the idea is, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? Now, the stupid answer to this question is obviously it's both, right? The, the glass is half full of water and half full of emptiness. Nothing, right? Because you only fill the glass halfway, which means it's got a lot of empty space at the top. So is the glass half full or half empty? Um, it's obviously both. But people, the, the expression in English... Um, glass half full types and glass half empty types. The idea is is that the way you describe it says something about your personality. That if you describe the glass, if you say, oh, that glass is half full, you're you're looking on the bright side. You're seeing the positive Um, uh, because you're concentrating on what's there. Because they're both completely correct descriptions, right? If you fill the glass halfway up with water, one person could say that glass is half full and the other person could say that glass is half empty and they're correct. But the idea is, is the person who says the glass is half full is concentrating on the positive. They're concentrating on what's there. They're concentrating that they have anything at all. Isn't that nice? Glass is half full. Oh, this is good. Better than empty. Um, The person who says the glass is half empty um, is generally thought to be pessimistic, um, that they're negative. Because instead of focusing on what's there, the water, they're focusing on what's not there. So the person who says the glass half full is happy it's not empty. The person who says the glass is half empty is annoyed that it didn't get filled up all the way. Um, And they're both 100% accurate ways of looking at the world. They're they're both sort of correct. The glass is half full and it's half empty. But it's it's a sort of psychological shorthand that we use. Someone who wants to, someone who describes this as half full Um, is a person who looks on the bright side. And someone who says the glass is half empty is a person who focuses on the negative. Now, what's funny about the title of Berkman's essay is it's called Happiness is a Glass Half Empty. That's not what I would have expected. Usually you think about the happy people are the ones who see it as half full, but he's going to make a strange argument that actually the half empty people are going to be happier in the long run. So anyway, we'll pick it up in the next video, but thanks for joining me for the start of our final reading of the semester.